Hi, my name is John and I'm the owner of this YouTube channel and I wanted to talk to you about the 1989 to 1992 Women's Artistic Gymnastics Code of Points, which I happen to have a copy of right here that I obtained from the FIG about 15 years ago. I wrote to them and asked them if they had any old copies of any codes of points offered to pay for them and I believed that um, I was just 16 or 17 at the time but I think I remember them just shipping them to me without any charge. So this cut of points is a very different beast from what we use today and so it requires some explanation and is very different from what you might be used to if you're recently a fan of gymnastics. Um, this code of points still had a 10.0 start value and all routines other than vaults had a base score of 9.6 which means that if you performed all of the special requirements and all of the required basic components of an exercise your starting score would be a 9.6 and you would need an additional four tenths from difficulty and bonus to get to a 10.0 start value. Skills in this code went from A to D only. D's being worth a tenth in bonus just as they are today. Another interesting feature of this code of points is that it had very little in terms of repetition rules. You could actually perform the same skill twice and get difficulty value both times. That, I believe, disappeared after this code of points. Compulsories were still part of the competition process in the early 90s. So rather than a qualification round and a team final round like we have today where gymnasts perform the exact same exercises, there were the compulsories and then the optionals and the two of those together comprised the team score. Although I believe, and I'm not sure about this, that only 40% of the team score came from the compulsories, 60% from the optionals. Vaulting was much easier by today's standards. For example, a Yurchenko full was a 10.0 vault. A front handspring, front pike was also a 10.0 vault. So was a front tuck with a half twist. And really, the Yurchenko full and the front handspring, front tucks and pikes with half twists kind of, I think, capture I think 98% of the vaults that you would have seen during this era in gymnastics. There is um, one very interesting vault that I found in the code of points that was since eliminated and that is this odd vault that involves a front tuck onto the springboard. Bonus in this code of points was accumulated in one uh, in several ways. Um, a gymnast could perform individual D skills and get up to two tenths from performing two natural D skills. The other method was through a system called value raising, which you won't recognize from today's gymnastics. Value raising involved um, combination sequences of skills resulting in skills later in the series being upgraded up to possibly a D uh, for additional bonus that way. So that would differentiate a natural D skill from a D skill that came about via value raising. Another option for bonus which was eliminated after this code of points in the next code in 1993 was a gymnast could get up to three tenths for originality meaning performing original elements or original connections. An individual original skill could get up to two tenths in bonus which actually kind of makes it sound a little bit like the E skill that would come in the next code that would be worth two tenths. Focusing specifically on the bars, 
there were a minimum of 10 elements required on the uneven bars, and I think this was probably to keep routines from being too short. Everything counted as an element, um, including a simple kip or cast. Two bar changes were also required, I think, to prevent gymnasts from doing all of their work on the high bar. Additional bonus was possible through value raising. Value raising on the uneven bars means that directly combined elements would raise the value of um, successive elements in the combination. And here were the basic formulas for value raising. The basic formulas for value raising started with B skills. Connecting two B skills would convert the second B skill to a C. A CB combination would raise the second B to a C. Two C skills in a row would convert the second C to a D, yielding a tenth of bonus. And there are some specific requirements about what C skills can be used in this formula. DB becomes DC. DC becomes DD. And if more than two elements um, are connected with their values being a B or greater, then the value of the second element in each succeeding element raises one value part step. So, for example, let's say a gymnast performed a stalder with a half turn ending in regular grip and then going in the opposite direction did another stalder with a hop grip change to a reverse grip and then did a forward giant in reverse grip which was a C skill back then that would be a combination of three C skills and the second two would be converted to D's for a total of two tenths of bonus or half the bonus necessary to reach a 10.0 start value I can see why these value raising formulas were confusing and therefore were probably scrapped in the next code in favor of more simple formulas. And I have a separate video that discusses that code of points. On the balance beam, again, value raising applied to directly connected elements. The basic formulas are numerous. There are about eight or so of them. BB becomes BC, and BC becomes BD. In other words, a back handspring to a layout step out resulted in one-tenth bonus because the layout was upgraded to a D. CB becomes CC, CC becomes CD, DC becomes DD, BBB becomes BCC, BBC becomes BCD, CCC becomes CDD. And these formulas apply to both acrobatic elements and gymnastics elements like leaps, jumps, turns. For series that were longer than three elements, the rules that BB becomes BC and that triple C becomes CDD were enforced. So, for a combination like a back handspring layout layout, which is not otherwise specified in the code of points, that would mean that um, this BCC combination would be converted to BDD for two tenths bonus. I also imagine that a series like a back handspring layout, back handspring layout, would mean that the second C skill would be raised to a D. The third skill, the second back handspring, would go from a B to a C, and that the final C skill would then be upgraded to a D, resulting in a final combination of B, D, C, D for two Ds and therefore two tenths in bonus. That's my interpretation of these somewhat confusing rules. I imagine, though, that a combination like that would also get bonus for originality. On the floor, value raising applied both to direct and indirect
connections of acrobatic elements and also direct connections of dance elements. There are about five pages of such value raising formulas, so I'm not going to read them now. One element that is definitely part of 80s gymnastics um, is this dismount, which I believe from the balance beam was performed by Nellie Kim at one point. And I don't believe that this is in the current code of points, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I know for sure that it was definitely not in the 2001 code of points, the one that I have studied the most. Speaking again of the floor exercise, it's worth noting that a double tuck was a D skill in this code of points. Just like a double twisting, double layout would have been, or a full twisting, double layout. If you're familiar with the most recent codes, you won't be surprised to hear that a double tuck was a D skill. This, however, was not true from 1993 to 2008, when only the double pike was a D skill. Rollout skills were still permissible in this code of points, but were banned in the next one. And um, here is an example of a rollout skill in the code of points. To make sure I'm being perfectly accurate and perfectly clear, my understanding is that for every round of competition after the optionals, meaning the all-around final and the event finals, 1D skill was required. And after that point, the addition of another natural D skill could earn a maximum of one-tenth in bonus, the remaining three needing to come from value raising and originality.